Lord. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Oh, I'm expecting great things. Everybody said great things.
it's real simple. It's literally one sentence, but the song says, uh, He is so
Because even today, with the enemy trying to make my mind feel like I was in, the Lord just brought this scripture to my reverence to remind me of what he was doing in my mind. And the scripture says something like this, and I wish I could get some help. The scripture says like this, uh, 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 when the enemy came in, the Bible says, like a flood, not referring to the enemy, but referring to how he's going to respond. See, we quoted that scripture ignoring the comma that's there. When the scripture's referring to the flood, it's not comparing the flood to the attack of the enemy, but it's comparing the flood to the response of God. I need somebody to open up your mouth and let's have church for just a moment, but I need you to look at somebody and high five them and tell them God's about to respond. Will you tell somebody that? Because, yes, the enemy may try to make you feel the effects of the storm. But what the enemy don't know is that what he's trying to stir up, there's a flood that's about to come and swallow everything that he tried. Because no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. And for the haters, for the witch and the warlock, here's the next part for you. Uh, every tongue that rises against us in judgment shall be condemned. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but only lean on Jesus' name. Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground. Watch it, go Pastor. It's sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. The old song said, Be very sure, be very sure that your anchor holds. The old Baptist church used to say, hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Next part we say, you ought to build your hope on on things eternal. Hold to God's, watch this, unchanging hand. Sometimes we change like the weather. Sometimes our mind and what we said we would do and what we said what we would promise it changes, but God is never changing. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And for this we give him praise. Clap your hands, everybody.
for this call. We give you glory, honor, and praise. I thank you for the anointing. Again, I ask for the anointing that makes teaching easy. Father, you say what you want to say. You have your way to move Jonathan out of the way. And you speak freely. In Jesus' name, everybody say. Amen. Luke chapter 16. And we'll, we'll, we'll read 19, but really begin at 20. Luke 16, verse 19, and again, to remind us and our audience tonight that our, uh, our Bible study series is entitled, The Bride of Christ. Right. Tell somebody, The Bride of Christ. Bride of Christ. Amen. We're looking forward to the return of Christ. And even as you're going to Luke 16, 19, I want to take about a minute and a half to share this when I was... Today, when I was uh, at work, and um, the Lord shared with me a very, very interesting statement, um, and I, I don't know, I just, I just feel like sharing it. It has nothing to do with the lesson, or that I know of, but, but I just want to share it. The Lord was dealing with me about something, and he, and he said something that I never heard before. He said, uh, he said. Out of those who saw me ascend and descend, and out of, uh, 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 yeah, out of those who actually witnessed Jesus ascending and descending, because the scripture let us know that he descended into hell after he died. And, but when he came and got up, days later, he then ascended into heaven. And so out of those who saw him ascend and descend, he, the Lord was dealing me and he said, he said, there is only one other person who has somewhat of a visual idea of what that day will look like when I come back. And he, and he told me, he said, it's Satan. I said, uh, I said, okay. And again, you know, I don't want to take long to do this because I want to get into the lesson, but I said, okay, God. I said, help me out with it. He said, remember your Bible lets us know that when Satan was kicked out of heaven, he, uh, the Bible lets us know not only that he get, got kicked out, but the Bible gives us an, a description of what it looked like when he got kicked out. The Bible lets us know that when he came out of heaven, he shot out of heaven almost like lightning. Yeah. Yeah. And he descended into the earth. That's right. That's right. He was, he was and so the Lord was letting me know, he said, because of the visual of how Satan has been able to see not only himself descend out of heaven, but to see others descend into hell. Yeah. The Lord was letting me know, he said, this is why the enemy his job is to play so much with your perception. The enemy's job is to play so much with how you see things and to spin the narrative for you to see it opposite of what the Bible says. The Lord was letting me know, he said, this is why uh, even, and, and something that Pastor Michelle, Pastor Michelle, you planted a seed in my spirit and didn't even know it. I didn't even know it, but what Pastor Michelle was telling me is she was she was educating me about the different left behind movies and the different uh, 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 movies that pertain to the book of Revelation. And she was letting me know, she said, notice how there were many things that God showed many of the writers who made a lot of these movies that happened years ago. But notice how the movies that were that are older and looking at time now, you see just how possible it is for the visuals that we see in movies that didn't even happen in the 2000s. A lot of these movies happened in the in the 19 in the 90s era. But it looks so much like what can happen right now. Somebody may say, well, why is that so important? Why is that so important? Because what it's showing us is the enemy's job, even when it comes down to people who believe in other gods and those that are 
down those that are atheists. The Lord was letting me know, he said, the reason why the enemy has tricked many of them is because of what they decide to believe in, but also because of perception. All right, all right. It is based upon what they decide to believe in and their perception of it. Somebody may say, why would you say it depends on what they decide to believe? Because I can tell you what the Bible says all day, but you have to make a decision to say, I believe the word. Now, here it is. The reason why I say perception is because if we're not careful, logic could win in areas where faith should. Oh, y'all didn't hear me what I just said. I said, oftentimes, if we're not careful, okay, I see how this sounds to the lesson. Logic can win in areas where faith should actually be winning. That's right. That's right. Let me say it again and make the devil mad. I said that logic can win in areas where faith should. Oftentimes we'll say, why am I going through this? Why is this going on? Why is this happening? Why is all hell breaking loose? Have you looked to see the faith in which you believe and why it's happening according to your faith? You do know that nothing, and I do mean nothing, I'm coming, can happen unless God says, let it be. Nothing can take place. Now, those who just say, well, you know, I just I just don't believe that. I'm not talking to you. Well, no, I'm talking to you, but I'm talking to your spirit, man, because logically it doesn't make sense. You with me? Logically, it's not going to make sense. Rationally, it's not going to make sense. And this is why God will allow us, and if you don't hear nothing else I say tonight, hear this statement and, I'll, and I'm done and that's this. God will allow certain things to happen in our lives for a bigger purpose than it's getting on my nerves. I'm tired. I'm aggravated. There's a bigger purpose to why certain things happen. But if you allow logic to win where faith should be applied, then you'll mess around and be no better than the atheist, no better than the Muslim, no better than the Hindu, no better than those who believe in Confucius, Allah, those who believe in witchcraft, and witchcraft is real. But it, it, but it's upon, it's based upon your faith and your decision on whose side you decide to be on. Because witchcraft will work, but what is witchcraft will eventually turn on you, and this is what people don't understand. It'll work for the Bible lets us know that sin will bring about pleasures that will only be satisfying for a short period of time. But the Bible lets us know that those of us who live righteous and do all right, the Bible lets us know that 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 the uh, suffering of this present time right. yeah. is not worthy to be compared to the glory yeah. that will be revealed. Yeah. yeah, I'm going through. I'm suffering right now. I'm aggravated. I'm tired. I don't know why this is happening. I don't understand why things just seem like it's looking up and then to turn around and just fall right back down. I don't understand it. I don't know why. But I much rather, instead of sitting there and go through a wheel of emotions and thoughts and why did I come up short and, and is it my fault and am I and is it this and that and the third and uh, uh, well maybe if I should have just did this right and took yourself and beat yourself up. You got to come to the decision and say, let me ask the one who's in control. God, why is this happening? Because I might as well ask the one who can change it just like that. Because while I sit here and complain, I'm wasting time. 
Because let me say this, I hope five people catch it. Because maybe God is trying to get you to learn a lesson. And upon you learning the lesson, maybe that next moment he's going to turn everything around. But God is not going to take you out of something that should be teaching you before time. God will not bring us out all because we cry, we complain, we get upset. And this is where God had to deal with me. Because the current situation that I'm that I'm in right now, God had to let me know, yeah, the reason why you're in it is because something that you told me about a month ago. Something that you said to me that now you didn't think I was you didn't think you were gonna pay for that, but I allowed you to pay for it. And let me say this, I'm not gonna talk about the situation, but I will tell you what I said. I hope it helped 10 people, and that's this. I told God out of anger, give me what I deserve. And he did just that. I told God, I said. Why am I still in this situation? Give me what I deserve. Oh, really? Here you go. Boom. Everything looking up. Oh, why me? Why is this going on? Uh -huh. No. Oh, oh, now you want to ask me? Okay, here's the reason why you're here. Now that you learned your lesson, I just made a way of escape for you. And let me say this prophetically and hope that everybody here catch it. Because same thing for me, I decree and declare for you if you allow God to teach it. And that is this. By the time you learn the lesson, you'll be out by Monday. Let me just go ahead and prop top shake it in the Time my whole You'll be out by Monday. Tell somebody, out by Monday, out by Monday. I'm going to go to Apostle right now, but I feel led in my spirit to actually go somewhere else in the lesson tonight. But go ahead. Let me say something to you. Let me say something to you and Alex. Go ahead. Say the name, Mr. Cleveland. He's called a devil Lucifer. He ain't no fake toy. He ain't no fake toy. He asked you when you trying to make your Savior look at him, which is Jesus Christ. What are you talking about? The devil been to heaven already. So what? Yes, the devil been to heaven already, and he went up there and so smart and seduced a lot of angels to look down on him. He seduced a lot of angels. Get on there in heaven. Don't feel bad the devil attacking you. He came to rob, steal, and kill. That devil ain't nothing with you. Put your foot down, and that's why we got the Holy Ghost now. The Holy Ghost now. We don't speak with our name, our name tongue. When we speak direct to the Holy Ghost, how are y'all? Hallelujah. Put the devil on the road. The, top, the Holy Ghost is thinking to him, how do they for God? Yes. And the devil can't touch him. We got something. Yes. I'm saying, he's been to heaven already. When you say something to the devil, put your foot down and say the blood of Jesus against you. Amen. And me, what do you say? So he's never to play you. He's to rob the other kid. But Jesus said, I come that you by our life and more of us. The word of God is right. That's all I can say. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I want us to go to Jonah chapter 1. Jonah? I, and, 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 if, and if the Lord allows us to go back to Luke, okay. Amen. then we'll go there. If Amen. not, then we'll presume next week. Amen. Amen. Want us to see something in the book of Jonah. Yeah. All right, all right. And 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 it just seemed like that sometimes that sometimes 
for the lesson I can never stay in one chapter. <laughs> That's all right, then, the fear of God. Live in word. Because the last time we stayed in an entire book was in the book of Revelation during that series. And we didn't move too much, but I, I had a feeling. I said, boy, we're doing really good staying in this one chapter. But I just had a feeling that the day would come where we would have to switch it up. And I'm all right with it. Jonah chapter 1. And I'm going to do my best to, I'm just going to do what God say. How about that? Because <laughs> I want to try my best. I, I really, really want to try to tie it into Luke somehow. And I, but I know only God, he'll do what he do. Jonah chapter 1. I'll give you a moment to get there. Because I don't have it on the screen. Because I, I didn't know we were going to go this way. What we're going to see in Jonah is we're going to see when what happens when the father, the husband man, gives because he's the husband man. And yes, Jonah is a male, but we're going to characterize him because husband, wife. Jonah playing the role of the wife. What happens when a direct order comes from the father comes from the head All right. and you decide because you see it through your own eyes a different way. You perceive that things should happen another way other than how God said it should go. All right. What will happen when God causes a detour that still has you where you're supposed to be right on time? I'm going to, no, no, because I knew you were going to do it. Because I know you. That's right. All right. Yeah. So I already had, in the GPS of life, a detour already set up for you wanting to make your own directions. Oh, that's right. Okay. All right. Jonah chapter 1. Because I want to do this quickly because I, I just peeked over in another tab of my phone what the message Bible has to say about it. And I really want to close out with that if we don't do nothing else. All right. All right. Jonah chapter 1. Jonah chapter 1 verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of a minute of a minute time, saying, Arise. Arise, the word of the Lord came to, came to Jonah, telling him, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. Verse 3, but Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And went down to Joppa, mm -hmm. and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare. Right. Therefore, and I will keep these for 
things in mind that we've been talking about. Avoiding hell, leadership, Amen. dying to oneself, and wealth. We're going to see all four, I promise you, in this one read tonight. Because keep this in mind, and that's this statement, that one thing that you can guarantee, one thing for sure, two things for certain, that God will either make you an example of what to do, or make you an example of what not to do. One of the two. But either way, he's going to use your story for his glory. Either way it goes. Jonah chapter 1, I got 20 good minutes. Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. God's, now I do have to cut across the fence because I want to give us uh, 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 information while we're reading the scripture. God was trying to extend a warning in hope that these people would repent. And he told Jonah, I want you my son my servant, my representative of the body of Christ, which in scripture is referred to as female. I want you to go and be my spokesperson because that's what a prophet is. They are, in so many words, in simplest terms, a prophet is a spokesperson. They are a representative. In other words, what you say it is representation of a brand. All right, all right. Talk back to me. All right, all right. What you say is in representing of a brand. Oh, yes. If I, hallelujah, if I have a Fortune 500 company's uh, 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 logo and I have their, 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 their colors, their commodities, this, that, the third, I represent them. If I to these grounds in an AT&T vehicle. Amen. I don't come in the name or in the uh, uh, presentation of myself. Yeah, yeah. I am an offspring. Amen. 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 I am a branch off yes. of what this company is all about. God wanted to show God wanted to show some people who are living a life of whoredom mm -hmm. All right. what life as a bride right. looked like All right. by sending a bride. Yeah. All right. All are you with me? Amen. I, I want to show, let me say this, I want to show those who I'm already married to yes. what it's like if you just come back home. Because the Bible says that God is married to the backslider. So that means you can divorce God. God can never divorce you. So God told Jonah, I want you to go and tell them, hey, I need you to go and get my bride. I need you to go get them. And let them know, hey, I want them. Hey, what you're doing, I see it. I'm acknowledging it because one thing that uh, yeah, 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 yeah. one thing that will happen, watch your voice, Jonathan, one thing that will happen in leadership, good leadership will call you out in love. In, no, in love. That's the important part. In love. And let you know, hey, this isn't this isn't, this isn't becoming of a wife. This isn't becoming of my bride. This is not becoming of who 
who I am. So let me send one of my representatives to let you know what I have to say. So he did thus. He told Jonah, go to Nineveh. Jonah, because we won't get a chance, we'll, uh, let me just go ahead and do this as well. Jonah did not want to go. The reason why he did not want to go was because he knew that God would extend mercy to these people. Why in the world would you not want somebody to receive what you received? The reason being, because we're going to read it, but I just want to cut across the fence to make some points. The reason why Jonah did not want to say anything to them was because Jonah was uh, uh, upset about what they were doing. And he felt like, he, he, he felt like, hey, they deserve what's coming to them. Oh, y'all better see where I'm going. I don't want you to save them. If anything, I want you to go ahead and damn them to hell instead of give them a way out. And so Jonah, <laughs> Jonah said, I'd rather pay to be disobedient. than to do it his way. No, let's read it. Let's read it. Let's read it. So, 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 verse 3. Jonah 1, verse 3. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. It is it's, it's so ironic that it says from the presence of the Lord when uh, God is omnipresent. Now, to the uh, to the to the to the unlearned reader, they may say, "Oh well, well, because God was uh, 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 maybe because for some reason God actually there was actually a way to escape His presence." Yeah. All actuality, no, there is never a way. No. There never was a way. To escape his presence, even because I just heard the thought over on the back side of the balcony up at the top. What about when Adam uh, 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 messed up and God said, where are you? He asked him that question so that Adam could understand that you just stepped into another realm. You stepped into a place that I never had confined for you to be in. A life that you have to pay for what you've done. On, a life where if you change it up, you got to pay your own way. If God, one of the things I learned, Brother Josiah, about God is that if you do it his way, then it's his pay. But if you do it your way, you got to pay. Sometimes, literally. It costs so much more yes, it does. doing it the way that you think it should be done yes. than just doing it the way that he told you to do it from the get-go. Now it costs you way more. It costs you heartache, aggravation, being upset. When all you had to do was just follow directions. Come on. Man. Come on. Yeah. Follow instructions. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you, the, when, the, when the mom was telling the, the daughter, hey, get this pot, but grab it from the bottom. Grab it from the bottom. Grab it from, grab it from the bottom. Why is it that people got to yell at us? To get our attention. What our reason why I said it is because sometimes God is allowing certain things to happen to realize, hey, you need to focus. You're focused on a lot of things, but one thing you should be focused on is becoming more sensitive to my voice. Because you, okay, maybe y'all never done it, but sometimes you can, sometimes I can convince myself that God said something else when I know what he said. No, I know what he told me. But I convince myself that he changed his mind. I ain't got long. But Jonah rose with the fleet unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He could never get out of his presence, but the presence of the Lord would, could, would be uh, equivalent to his provision. In other words, in other words, this is like a GPS. The GPS, uh, you can put it in the GPS, find the fastest route to get to where I'm going. Y'all, y'all go with me. I want you to find the fastest route for me to get where I'm going. Yeah. But if you decide to make a turn, yes. Yes, I, I do. because here it is, the GPS, if it had a personality, could feel uh, almost like a, 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 a disrespected because I know landmarks and roads and tolls and where to avoid highways. I know all these things better than you do. So I'm going to give you the fastest route of getting there, where I'll also give you a signal to let you know there might be an accident ahead, this might be over here, this didn't happen, there's a car that is stalled, so I'm telling you to look out for it in advance. See, that GPS will tell you what you need to know before you get there. But no, you want to decide, no, I've always gone this way, so let me take this turn. No, no. I said, go this way. Because here it is. Let me say this and hope that everybody catches it. And that's this. If you want to get there at the time that I told you you would get there, then you're going to follow how I tell you to go. There have been times where I've mapped out where I was going the next day. And which tells me that my GPS already has in its artificial mind what way I need to go before I even get in the car. Amen. So all I got to do is just follow the directions of the GPS if I want to get the results that the GPS tells me I will get. That's right. But the moment that I decide, let me make the directions. No, no, I've already given you the will. Just follow the direction. God, hallelujah, God is letting us know we came up with the church cliche, Jesus take the wheel. No, no, you take the wheel. Let me be the passenger and I will tell you where to go. No, no, I'm not going to force you to do what I told you to do. You're going to drive. I'm going to be in the passenger seat and you have a choice. Either listen to the navigational system or you guess your way on there. All right. Exactly. Make a U-turn, turn around. Make a U-turn, get off on this exit. You miss this exit. Get on this exit. Turn around, turn around. Make a U-turn. Turn off on the next exit. Turn off on the next exit. Okay. Turn off on the next exit. You're going to get there, just not the time that you were expected to. No, no, you're still, okay, can I go back to Luke for just a second? The rich man died rich. But he lived a life that wasn't pleasing in God's sight. How do we know? We'll deal with it next week. Because you're going to eventually, no, 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 no. Because you're going to eventually get what, this is the point I need you to get. 
eventually you're going to receive everything that God told you. If you don't get it, your children will get it. Come, come Abraham. What God told Abraham, Abraham received the word, but his children lived it out. So you and your bloodline is going to see what God said before it's all done and over with. But the question is, what are you doing between prophecy spoken and prophecy fulfilled to make sure that you don't become the gift or that the gift don't take control of you, you take control of the gift. The blessing don't take control of you, you take control of the blessing. Five minutes. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish. Are you looking at it? I want everybody looking at it. If y'all don't mind, I want everybody. Because I want you to see the next part. Do y'all see the next? Don't say it yet. I just want to know if you see it. Before we read it. So, so, don't be, y'all see it? Say amen if you see it. The next part of the scripture says, so he paid. He paid the fair thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarsus from the presence of the Lord. Hey. I want us to see that word preference, pre presence as the word provision. You can never leave God's presence, but you can temporarily leave his provision. Which can suggest that you feel him most or you know that he's there most when you're in his will. Because his will is I've already designed for you to go this route. Now you can go off, but you're still going to get there. But now, here it is. It didn't surprise me that you detoured because I already had it set up in the navigational system for things like this. Just in case. No, no. God is not MapQuest. He's the or he's kind of like the original GPS, the Tom Toms. Now I'm gonna feel old. I'm about to ask this question on the spot. Josiah, you know what a Tom Tom is? Definitely doesn't. Ooh, I feel old. Definitely doesn't. Ooh, Jonathan, you're only 24. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and he went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare. Thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Verse 4. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. God sent the detour. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was likened or was like to be broken. So the wind and the waves were so boisterous to the point where at any given moment the whole ship could fall apart. Verse Five. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the wares that were in the ship or are in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep. Jonah went to sleep while everybody was calling to their gods and they were throwing stuff out of the boat trying to figure out what's going on. Is the boat too heavy? But I want us to see uh, 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 this part here, let me see. Where is it? 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 Verse 17, the last verse of the chapter. Give me two seconds. Don't forget what you're about to say. Verse 17. 
Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. He was supposed to head to one destination and ended up getting detoured by the storm and ended up having to get an Airbnb and a fish for three days and three nights. The part that I really want us to see is this. The fish was prepared. Could it be, the Bible lets us know, I'm closing here, and I'm, but I'm calling to Pastor Michelle, the Bible lets us know that God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. What excellent means is that God will allow good things, bad things, ugly things to happen to both that are saved and unsaved. So you should never go throughout life thinking that everything is going to be perfect. Because all because things fall apart don't mean you should. What lets me know, Sister Janine, that Jonah knew so much about God and what could suggest to me that Jonah knows so much about God to the point where he probably wasn't even surprised that God was allowing all this to happen was simply for this reason alone. While all of that was going on, Jonah was asleep. I'm closing. Never saw like this until the Lord is bringing. He's downloading to me now. Everything, no, no. Because I know God well, and because I know his voice well, I am not surprised this is happening. Because I knew getting on this boat, something was going to break loose. I, no, I, it was, I knew it, that it was only a matter of time. Because truth be told, I know, oh shit, I know what he told me to do. I decided to do something else. Your Bible says God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, that shall you also reap. And isn't it comical? It's comical, but it's serious. That whenever we know we in a situation that we know we caused and we know God has us in it to teach us a lesson, ain't it ironic that we want to go to sleep? You know what? I'm just so through. I'm just, I'm, you know what? Let me, I just want to go to sleep. How is it any day? Listen, let me, look, look. I'll talk to you tomorrow. I, listen, I just, I just, I, I just got two things in my mind. That's taking a shower and going to bed. I just need to do those two things. And I'll be all right. Just, I will talk to you later. No, well, I just want, no, listen, I just, listen, I just, let me go to bed, I don't want, well, it's only 8 o'clock, listen, I am tired, today was your off day, I am tired, What well, can you do? I can't do nothing. Well, what are we going to eat? Call Uber Eats. Get some, look, I bought some lunch meat. This is the fish ready. Going to make you a sandwich. Don't know. And then we got the audacity to come in the house and make all kind of rules. Don't nobody call my name. Don't say nothing. If I hear one loud bang, everybody gonna feel the wrath. <laughs> now let me flip this and I'm done. How ironic that everybody else is acting how I'm describing, but Jonah was sleeping just peacefully. Turn it over. Yeah. Hey, brother, uh, you sleep. Now let me say this and really make a, let me make three witches mad because I, I want to do this. And that's this. 
uh, 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 at the end of the day, even in Jonah's disobedience, everybody knew who God was by the end of the by the end of the trip. That's the part that we miss. Because they found out, because again, the Bible said everybody called on their gods. And they even cast lots. What does that mean? They they were betting. They were gambling to see who is the reason why this is going on. And the Bible says that the lots fell on Jonah. God will not only use your story to get his glory, but God will use your gods to show that he's the real, true, and living God. He'll use what is logical just to prove that he is real. It's fair in the world standard to flip a coin. Heads or tails. It's a 50 50 shot. But if God says, I'm going to prove to everybody that I'm God by making it fall on heads every time, I don't care how many times you flip that coin, I'm going to make it fall on heads every time. You best believe that every time you flip it, it's going to fall on heads. I'm, I'm over. He prepared the fish. Final thought, and I'm done. God not only prepared the fish, some call it a well, some call it a fish, but either way, if we were to compare it to a well, let's say it's a well, or a fish, here's the thing. A well is a big animal, but the size of its throat cannot consume a human. I'm done. I'm leaving you with this final thought. A well cannot logically swallow a human whole. Amen. Think about it. But God. A well that big, a fish that big, cannot swallow a human whole. Their throat is not that big. It can't do it. However, God prepared this fish to be able to open up wide enough to swallow Jonah whole. What am I saying? And he put a time stamp on it. I want you to hold him for 72 hours. Because I know that by the time he gets out of this, I know that he will go in. Let me say that this, and I promise you I'm done. He's going to want to go in with the mind of a whore. But when he comes out, he's going to come out like who I intended to send. And that is my bride. Pastor? I just wanted to remind us that one thing about disobedience, we got to remember it's sin. Because the Bible says those that know to do good and does not do good to him it is a sin. And so disobedience, even delayed obedience, is still sin. And it's amazing how we're surprised how sin costs not just us, but those that are attached to us. If we look back in the message in the scripture that was taught on tonight, look how they had to throw items and things overboard while Jonah was asleep. They throwing all their goods, all everything they say. So it don't only cost you, but it costs those that are attached to you when we make decisions that are not like God. And another little, little nugget I want to give y'all is uh, GPS stands for God's provision system. <laughs> and Lord, y'all got a little nugget in my spirit. I said, oh, I like that. God's provision system. Follow it or not, the choice is yours. Amen. And what's so ironic, and you can read in the Elysia, when he got to Tarsus, he got there in it. And, and if, if you want to ask me, we can, we can, I can show you in scripture how I, how, how it's there, but it's there. He got there in the time frame he was supposed to get there. That's right. Because the Bible lets us know 
that by the time that three days was up, not only did the well let Jonah go, but it let him go on land. He couldn't hold it. He couldn't hold it. He not just talking like God. And it's going to That well or that fish, however you want to spin it, spit him out in Tarshish. So what that tells me is that in a sense, what God can and will do is he'll take your vessel and put you in another vessel that you can't tell the driver how to drive. You can't tell them how fast to go. You can't tell them turn off here, turn off there. No, no, no. You're going to still do what I said do, but now you're going to do it bound, chained, confused, aggravated, tired, wanting to go to sleep. Now you're going to do it upset, aggravated, but you're still going to get there. No, no, you're going to still get there. That's the part if you don't care, if y'all don't care, nothing else. No, no, you're going to do exactly what was in his will for you to do. You're going to do it. And you're going to arrive to each destination on time. Everything's going to be fine. Your trip is not going to be delayed. There's not going to be you having to wait in the airport. No, it's going to be a smooth sail ride. But it's up to you on how you get there. You can't determine when. I'm telling you. I'm telling you what I know. I'm not telling you just what I I'm telling you what I know, what I've read, and what I've experienced. And you cannot tell God how. You can't tell him where. But you can determine how you get there. Amen. Yeah, you can determine it. You can determine how you get there. Because you can get there either trusting in God and praying and fasting and doing what you know you're supposed to do in response to what's going on. Because what if, I know where I gotta go, but what if, what if Jonah would have just said, hey God, I don't want to do this. And God could have walked him through scripture, given him words of impartation to say, Jonah, this is why you need to do this. But Jonah made up in his mind, no, I'm just, I don't even want to consult God about this. I'm going to just go ahead and pay and do this and do this in the third. And, and because I don't want to, I, because I don't want to be conscious of what he decides to do to me upon me getting there, let me go to sleep. I'm the reason why I'm here. Maybe this ain't y'all. Maybe this is me. I'm the reason why I'm here. I can't get upset with God, the devil, supervisors, my neighbor, my family, my friend. I can't get mad at nobody. And can I say this? And I really feel I really feel a dance. But can I say this? Even when I learned the lesson, Josiah, God told me before the confirmation. That, it, that he that he he let me know. He told me when I would get out. And then moments later, the confirmation came that I was out. Y'all did this already. God told me, "Here's how I'm going to do this thing." And after he told me how he would do it. Oh, I'm out. But I had to learn what he wanted to teach me. Because had I not had I not taken the time to say, God, why am I here? I would still be there until I decided to say, God, why am I here? Teach me. Show me. What do I need to learn? What do I need to see from this? I know I'm way over. I'm leaving with this thought and I'm letting you fresh up out of here and that's this. What God will do what God will do is because this is what he had to personally teach me. I don't know if this might help everybody in here. 
But this is what he told me, and I'm going to say this to the one, two, three, four, five, six of y'all and those watching online, and that's this. God had to let me know, I'm working with you with your patience, and I'm helping you with the anxiety that you did not know was there. But one thing that you are never going to do is lash out at me like you lash out at everybody else. Because I'll allow you to repent to them and I'll allow grace and mercy to be extended to you. But if you talk to me that way, I'll prepare something for you that will hold you until you repent the way I want you to repent. I'll let you get away to an extent yeah. with talking to other people like you're crazy. Come on. Come on. And I'm going to still tell you to go back to them and get it right. But the moment that you think yeah. you can talk to the old, the almighty God, Yeshua, yeah. will in the middle of a will. Yeah. So call it wonderful counselor, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom. The moment you think you can talk to me like you crazy, I'm going to show you how I deal with people that talk to me like, must you be reminded that I'm the one that put breath in your stinking body? I'm the one that kept you in your right mind when you thought you were going to nut up and lose it. The many times that you considered admitting yourself to a therapist yes. and I kept you in your right mind and you're going to talk to me like you crazy, let me show you who I really am. I'll prepare this well for you. And by the time it's time for you to get out, you'll be right where you should have always been. Clap those hands if you will. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just I owe 17 hours. Okay. I just want to thank God Pull it up. for that amazing word. Hallelujah. It just touched every aspect of what I'm dealing with as far as lessons. Thank you, Jesus. And, and, and God, it, I wrote so many notes. Hallelujah. So I'm not going to go through all of them. But I just thank God because I was at home in the shower and I was like, I'm going, I'm getting ready to lay down. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I, oh, God, I've been up there. And I was just like, I'm going to go to Bible study. God has something for you. Something, a word, because, you know, in my mind, I'm trying to figure things out. And that's not what I'm supposed to be doing. So the other day, I called my pastor and I decided that I was going to discuss with her the position that I'm in. And what's going on? But we got disconnected, mm -hmm. so I never called back because I I feel like I didn't need to talk about it, talk about it with God. But God blessed you to give me what exactly what what I'm dealing with and what I'm going through, and that's mm -hmm. this lesson because I keep coming in contact with this same spirit. Come on. And instead of dealing with it, I'm running. But I'm not doing that no more. That's right. I'm going to deal with this spirit. Hallelujah. I'm going to deal with this person. That's right. For whatever God, whatever lesson That's right. God is teaching me. Hallelujah. I'm on. praying for it. But I needed everything that you told me. Everything. Oh, and I feel Jesus. like Jonah. That's I feel right. like I'm, I'm not sleeping. That's right. You know, I'm in it. You know, and I'm dealing with it. But I thank God for just the revelation. Yeah. Because I was... I, Oh, God, again. Why wow, me? You got me with this person. You know, oh, I'm working hard. Oh, I can't do it, but I'm going to do it. That's right. And I'm going to see it through because I feel it. it's done. I'm not going to deal with this spirit anymore. Hallelujah. It's the same exact no more. that I've been running from. That's right. Jesus. You know, and I just thank God for the word. And everything you talked about, it touched on. And I, I'm going to go back through my notes. Like mm -hmm. I said, I, I especially love. I just gotta say this because I didn't put it in the chat. I especially love the perception of things, but I also love avoiding. Wait a minute, I'm sorry. I'll be writing so fast. Logical win in areas where fault should. Yes. Faith should. Yes. And that's amazing. And I remember you saying that logic, you know, people don't understand the logic. 
for believers will understand when we're dealing with faith. Yes. And that's all I kept saying in my head, like, okay, now I understand. Because God gave it to the prophet to break it down of what I'm going through. Yes. You know, and I did the same exact thing. God, I deserve better. You know, I've been doing this, I've been going here, I've been doing this. I'm a good person. I don't do this, I don't do that. Why am I in this situation? God said, why not? You know, I need you to elevate. I need you to elevate your spirituality. I need you to get your mind to be different. And I just thank God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glory. Thank you. 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 Yeah. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. He put Jonah in the Airbnb. Yes, he did. <laughs> and airlifted him right on the middle. That's right. Airbnb. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Have your temper tantrum. That's right. That's right. I'm still here. That's right. I'm waiting. And you're going to get there. And you're going to do what I said. Do, and it's going to work out the way I always intended it. And you're still going to be blessed by it. Right. That's right. Because I'm still listening. Thank you. Come on. I'm still eating. Amen. Let's, let's, let's get ready to go. Jesus, thank you. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Well, I'm going to let our pastor dismiss us. Amen. Amen. Let's thank God for our pastor on the night. Amen. 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 Amen.
prosper. Why? Because we trust in him. Why? Because we bless the Lord. Why? Because we're not walking in the council of the ungodly. The word of the Lord calls us blessed. I don't care what it looks like. We're not standing on logic. We're standing on faith. Hallelujah. So to God be the glory for all the things that he has done. Hallelujah. So we thank God for each and every one on tonight. We ask you to join us tomorrow online for our family prayer night. Amen. Amen. Join us for noonday prayer Thursday and Friday this week. Hallelujah. Pray one for another. Love everybody. Forgive quickly. Glory to God. Repent quickly because the time is at hand. Hallelujah. Let's not live life in regrets. Let's go and do what we need to do. Let's do whatever God tells us to let it go. Let it go. Do what he tells us to do the first time so we ain't got to keep going and doing no repeats. Amen. I don't want to stay that no more. Glory to God. I'm 15 in the third grade. It's time is up now. We got to grow now. Hallelujah. We should be in kindergarten and we the tallest one in the class. We drive a car to look like a teacher, but we're in kindergarten. The devil is like, it's time for us to grow up. Amen. All of us got room to grow in God. Amen. And we ain't in a competition with nobody but our yesterday self. Amen. So the next time we'll be live is Sunday morning. We challenge you, if you're able to be here at 1030, join us at 1030 to 1045, especially those that are online on our social media audience. You may be in different cities, what have you, but we challenge you to be praying during that time of 1030. And then as we go into Sunday school at 1045, continue to pray for us as we pray for you. And God will change things. Amen. So God, we thank you and praise you for all that's been said and done. Continue to keep us, lead us, and guide us. And as our good friend, Chief Apostle, um, Chief Apostle Harris would say, to order our steps in your word. And so God, order our steps, God, today, tomorrow, and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, everybody.